The following is a rebroadcast of the 1995 New Hampshire Candlepin Championships. Be sure to join Doug Brown and Dan Murphy on Saturday, October 7th for a brand new season of Candlepin Skins. WNDS Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present the championships of the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. It's the 1995 All-Event State Tournament. Now, from the Londonderry Bowling Center, here are Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Good afternoon once again, everybody, and welcome to the Londonderry Bowling Center here in Londonderry, New Hampshire, and to the finals of the 1995 New Hampshire All Events Women's Championship. I'm Doug Brown, along with Dan Murphy, who happens also to be the president of the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association, sponsoring the state tournament uh, this year, as always, and uh, it's come down after the the weeks and weeks of bowling for the ladies down to this one final match. That's right, and uh, couldn't be two better uh, competitors, uh, Janet and uh, Glennis, uh, for the finals. It should be a terrific match. All right, let's show you the women's bracket and remind you how they got to this point. Again, 21 games of bowling in five different disciplines in order to determine the top five finishers, and those are the five names that you see in our bracket. Janet Park up in the upper right-hand corner was the overall lead finisher, so from that number one position, she has the benefit of moving right into the finals without having to uh, play in this playoff round. The other four bowlers had to compete in two additional matches. Carol Downey beat Debbie Regan. Glennis Mangano beat Lois Queen in the first round. And then last week here on the wins, it was Glennis Mangano with the win 320-307 to over Carol Downey. So it's Glennis against Janet Pock in today's championship match. And, uh, well, it's kind of interesting. We have a matchup here of two former Massachusetts state champions and uh, interestingly enough Janet Pock is the defending champion in both Massachusetts and New Hampshire. Yeah, she's just had a terrific run the last several years and uh, and uh, you can see for this tournament she's still on top of her game so it's going to take a, a good effort on Glennis's part to stay with her. All right let's get a look at our two bowlers then. First of all the number three seed when this play down began from Bill Ricca, Massachusetts, and our winner last week, Glennis Mangano. Okay, Glennis comes in averaging 117, a roll-off, I mean a high single was 186, and her high triple is 438. And again, Glennis with that 320 last week to defeat uh, Carol Downey in the semifinals. And so Glennis moves into the championship match against our number one seed, who's had an opportunity to, uh, to rest a little bit after those first 21 games of competition. She's been waiting around to find out who her opponent will be. Now she knows, and she is ready to go as well in this final. Our number one seed from Lynn, Massachusetts, Janet Pock. Okay, Janet averaging 122, has a high single of 182, high triple of 450. All right, the state championship. All events championship on the line, $500 to the winner and a fine trophy as well, $250 to the runner-up, and we will be back to begin this state championship match after this break. Don't go away. Ready to go for the state championship match. Ladies all events, Glennis Mangano to lead it off. Came into the final round as the number three seed. And as you saw in the open, she defeated Lois Queen in a five game match and then Carol Downey in a three game match here last week to get to the finals. Glennis will start out with a seven. Again, this is just the second year that Glennis has been entered in the New Hampshire State Tournament. Both times she's finished in the top ten. Now she's looking to win it all. And she's facing a very formidable opponent indeed in Janet Pock, who has been uh, one of the top flight candlepin bowlers, men or women, for several years now. That's for sure. Just sliding by. The Six and ten. Those are the type of opportunities you have to cash in on. Well, I think Glennis alluded, that, alluded to this uh, at the end of last week's show, Dan. Even though she won that match against Carol Downey, she did miss several single pins and missed some opportunities that she knows she could have cashed in. So, well, A lot of times, you know, you, Janet has the reputation now. And a lot of times, that's mm -hmm. a little bit of an advantage. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like a gunslinger, you mm -hmm. know. <laughs> it's a little quicker on the draw. Than Janet Pock has been with us here on the wins many times before. 
And uh, quite an accomplishment. I don't imagine that's happened very often, Dan, but uh, Janet won both the New Hampshire and Massachusetts state titles in 1994. She'll defend her uh, Massachusetts title, or try to, a little bit later on in the year. And Janet will shoot the 6-10, and we'll take a 9 box. Janet has won the New Hampshire State Tournament three times. In fact, she's done it in the last three even-numbered years, 1990, 92, and then last year. Four horsemen plus the eight. I think both bowlers are hoping for a little quicker start than Glennis and Carol Downey had last year, the last week, last year. <laughs> well, time flies. <laughs> 10 for Janet, and she'll have a three pin lead after the opening pair. Don't forget, next week we begin our two weeks of coverage of the men's all events championship. As Glennis fires a quick nine drop, she'll shoot at the eight. And again, this was one of the problems she had last week. Single pins. And again. Next week in the men's semifinal match, it'll be 18-year-old Chris Bovair from Merrimack, New Hampshire. against Dan Murphy, who is... <laughs> I thought you were going to say my age. Well, well, I would if I knew, but it's a closely guarded 29. secret, as you know. <laughs> uh, let's just say I, uh, I can double his age. <laughs> and then a few. And then some more, right? Yeah. Another single pin opportunity for uh, Glennis Mangano. Yeah. The, w the winner of that match next week between Chris Bovair and Dan Murphy will face the number one men's seed, Gary Carrington, two weeks from today. And there is a confidence builder. Got to be right there for Glennis Mangano. Yeah, what reward that is, huh? You win a match, you just have to face Gary <laughs> Carrington. <laughs> no, Janet right in the one-two pocket. Let's see. Five, nine, ten, and a piece of wood that... I don't know if it's going to help her too much. She may want to go way to the left and clip the wood and swing the wood in between the five and nine. Waiting around for that other piece of wood to see what that will do. It'll stay toward the back. Let's see. Yeah. Nope, not quite enough. No, Good effort, though. Yeah, it was. Trying to cut it over with the angle of that wood, though, is just a really difficult shot. And that'll be the ten for Janet. Janet is the number one seed, as you might expect, did well in all of her events in this all events competition. Again, five different disciplines. Janet finished second to Glennis Mangano in the singles competition. She was third in both doubles and team competition. And there's the spare for Janet, her first mark. Janet was fifth in the mixed team event and ninth in mixed doubles and she converts the triangle for her first spare matching the spare from Glennis in the fourth and the fill is eight right in the pocket leaves the five and the eight piece of wood out in front and it's quite a bit out in front the ball is going to fly oh yes. nice shot very nicely done two in a row Glennis finished in the top ten in four of the five events. Of course, she won the state singles championship, as I just mentioned, with a 689, which incidentally is a house record here at Lenendary Bowling Center. It's five games, of course, for the ladies. And the pins are still dropping. <laughs> well, the four turned into seven. Leaves herself to 7, 9, and 10 with all kinds of lumber down the say, I don't know about this wood, though. Even if she caps it, you know, not, not a lot happening down there. She might have been better off with another pin or two standing. So uh, Glennis was first in the singles, third in teams, fifth in doubles, and sixth in mixed teams. 
The only event she did not finish in the top 10 was mixed doubles. So 69 through 6 for Glennis, and now Janet Pock working on her spare. Of course, uh, to get to this event, Dan, it's interesting because we're, we're televising this as if it were an individual event, and it really isn't because you, uh, you get to this point in the all events by competing in all those five disciplines, and you have a lot of partners along the way. That's right. Last week, we uh, acknowledged uh, all of Glennis Mangano's uh, bowling partners uh, to get her to this point. Janet Pock converting for a 10. Janet bowled with Nancy Vestal in doubles, with John Maffeo in mixed doubles. Her mixed team teammates were Nancy Vestal, John Maffeo, and Sean McKinley. And there's a big strike for Janet in the sixth. Crosses over in the one-two pocket, and just the five pin was the last one to go. Explosive ball by Janet Park. And interestingly, these two bowlers were on the same team in the team competition. Janet and Glennis bowled with Cindy and Lois Queen and Nancy Vestal. Glennis going by the head pin on the four horsemen. Ten box. So this uh, match today also, Dan, one of the many interesting subplots. This is a match between the last two Massachusetts All Events champions. Janet won it last year and Glennis the year before. Glennis looking for her first New Hampshire title. Janet, as we mentioned, has three already. And Glennis has the spare in the eighth. Converts the six, nine, and ten, the triangle in the right-hand corner. Her third mark, all spares. Would it be easier, do you think, to bowl against a teammate in this kind of a situation? Uh, Someone you know very well? I don't know. It's, uh, I think if you have to bowl against Janet, it's not going to be easy no matter if she's a teammate <laughs> or not. <laughs> Almost a double you, strike for Janet. You may have a tendency to be a little more relaxed. Spare on strike for Janet Park. Working the big scoreboard here at Londonary Bowling Center for the benefit of the fans watching and for the bowlers too is Cindy Sissom as always. And working our computer scoreboard here on the wins for this state championship event is Tanya Murphy. Dan's daughter, we would not entrust Dan with the <laughs> computer for such a big event. Everybody's sitting at home saying, aha, that's why there's been no mistakes so far. <laughs> Three in a row for Janet Park. Spare and two, uh, strike and two spares. And grabs a 14-pin advantage through seven boxes. And I'm sure you won't mention it because you don't want to seem like you're bragging about your daughter, but Tanya finished ninth in the... Uh, in the Women, women's handicap division mm -hmm. in the state tournament. For another mark for Glennis. Two in a row in the eighth and ninth. Another spare. A little better start than she had last week against Carol Down. Four marks for each bowler to this point, and another good fill for Glennis, this time seven. She has got it going right now. Actually, both bowlers have. Triangle again. Two, four, and five. Yes. yes. Three in a row to finish the first game. 124 plus a ball. We get another look. No doubt about it. This with that big arm swing. She'll Carries take. five, and it'll be a 129 to open up for Glennis Mangano. Janet Pock working on a spare. She'll carry eight. She'll shoot at the 3-6, trying to make it four marks in a row for her. Spare uh, strike followed by three spares if she was to corral the three and the six. Oh, Ooh, no. Too sharp on the three pin. Left the six. And 
Janet will settle for the nine, so she could take the lead with a 10 box or more as she moves to the 10th. Janet now lives in Lynn, Mass, works as an accounts receivable clerk for Transnational Travel in Boston. Brooklyn pocket hit, carries an extra pin. Not an easy leave, though. Now I had a shot similar to this the first box, but had a piece of wood between the five and the nine. Just trying to cut the five over. Nope. Well, if she were to get two of these, we'd have a tie match. She'll do. Takes out two, exactly. All even after one game. Fine bowling for both competitors here. The first game of the New Hampshire Women's All Events State Final is in the book. 129 for Janet Pock, 129 for Glennis Mangano. Back with game two after these words. Welcome back to the Londonderry Bowling Center, and once again, uh, here is the rundown of events that are involved in the All Events Championship. Now, this is in the open portion of the competition. Uh, all the, in this case, all the women bowlers competing in five different events. You bowl five games in singles, five games in doubles, five games in mixed doubles, and then three games each in both teams and mixed teams. Now, interestingly enough, the team competition is five bowlers. The mixed team is four bowlers on each team. So that gives you an idea of how many different bowlers are involved uh, in the all events competition, even for the bowlers that eventually reach this level and compete for the championship. They've uh, got to, I guess to a certain extent, Dan, share that uh, trophy a little bit with the other <laughs> folks that helped them along the way. But of course there are uh, separate championships for all of those different disciplines. Oh, Janet Pock right out of the shoot with a strike to start game two. Not much doubt about that one either in the one three Pock. It didn't take long for those ten pins to fall. Here's the replay of that. And now on lane 29. Brooklyn side this time with a good mix. She'll leave the ten pin. And wood turning, maybe a little too much. <laughs> but she's got that wood in back, too. Uh, although the wood in back is not frozen on the 10-pin either. Uh, I'd say she'd probably still have to go at the 10-pin. Oh, no. Oh, oh, got it. Oh, the wood in the channel helped her keep that other piece of wood in play. Let's see. Watch the wood in the channel help this first piece stay in play right there. And actually pull this uh, first piece out of the channel for the 10-pin. So quickly, Janet has two marks up. Glennis will shoot at the one and the nine. Pretty good break there for Glennis. She was square on the three pin and dropped eight. For the spare, no, right around the nine pin. Ten bucks. Glennis on the head pin that time and getting a terrific mix and look out. Oh, that's going to oh, go. Yeah. <laughs> my, oh, my. Oh, Glennis having a laugh with Janet about that one. That looked like it was going to be an ugly leave at first. Right here, it looks like the three, the seven, eight, and ten, and finally they all go. <laughs> now Janet will shoot at the one, seven, nine, ten. That's six on her spare. For another? Oh, what a shot! Oh, oh, oh she deserved up. that shot. What a great shot that was. Had two or three shots at it and still didn't want to go. Judging from her reaction, I think Janet thought she had it. I think so, too. <laughs> and so did we. There's one shot at it. Comes back. There's a second shot. Rocks it, but just not enough to knock the seven down. 
right back in the pocket, but she'll shoot at the 5, 6, and 10. Wants the wood to stick around. It's the right piece, isn't it? Well, I'd take a piece of that and the 5 pin, and hopefully it'll come off the left side wall for the 6, 10. A little further left. So two open frames for Janet Bach, and when Glennis Mangano steps up, she'll be working on her first strike of the match. Another 10 for Janet. So Glennis trailing by 16 pins, as you saw, but now working on a strike and against two open frames. Well, again, going down on that three pin, she's got the exact same leave she had last time on this lane. Very close to making the 1-8 last time. Let's see if you can improve a little. Oh, no. no, the 9 pin is still there. She rocks one like Janet rocked the 7 pin. No spare to show for it, but a good fill on the strike. And the 10. So Janet's lead now 7. Big nine drop. And standing all alone is that five pin. It's right on it this time. Oh, though. yes. Single pin spare, and that takes us to a break. Just about even here, almost halfway through for the Women's All Events State Championship. We'll be back to the Londonary Bowling Center after these messages. Janet Park set to go as we resume game two. A terrific match going here for the state championship. Special presentation here on the Winds of New England, our first involvement with the state tournament. And Dan, we want to thank uh, you and the rest of the board members of the NHCBA and especially all the lane operators as well who uh, help us throughout the course of the year. We're happy to be involved with the state championships this year. So I'd like to uh, a special thanks to uh, Charlie Reed and and all the staff here at Botwell, uh, Botwell said <laughs> London Terry. You'll uh, just do anything for cheap plug, won't I, you? I will. <laughs> uh, for running a, a terrific tournament. It's been several years that we've held it right here at the London Air Bowling Center and they do a terrific job with the scores and scheduling and it's a lot of work behind the scenes that we take for granted sometimes. Yeah, we should have uh, pointed out that in addition to having the finals and semifinals on television, the entire tournament is bowled here at Londonderry. And that's an awful lot of bowlers <laughs> bowling an awful lot of games over a period of six or seven weeks. Janet Pock with the spare in the sixth. By the way, uh, someone mentioned uh, a little earlier, Dan, asking a, a very valid question probably, especially in light of the fact that our two competitors today bowling for the New Hampshire State Championship both live in Massachusetts. <laughs> but the key is that if you are a league bowler in the state of New Hampshire at one of the NHCBA member bowling centers, that's what you have to be in order to qualify for the state championship. So it doesn't matter if you don't live in New Hampshire as that's long right. as you're a regular bowler in and the state of New Hampshire. The flip side of the coin is Janet Park was a resident of New Hampshire last year and she won the Massachusetts State <laughs> Tournament. <so. laughs> Halfway through, just one pin is the difference. Wants that 10 pin to go, but let's see where the wood settles down. May have a shot here. Looks like maybe the red line. Ball take the 10 and the wood take the 4-7. Let's see if it happens. All you have to worry about is the ball flying up and over the 10 pin. Glennis waiting for one of her balls to return. Got a chance. Yes. Very nicely done. Matches the spare put up by Janet Pock. Great shot. It's right on the red line. <laughs> Janet through the middle, the one, five, and eight. Just a three fill on the spare.
tomorrow at noon here on the Winds. The semifinal of the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. That'll be our number three seed, Gary Carrington. Against our number two seed, Chris Sargent. Last Sunday, if you missed it, Gary Carrington threw a 456 to advance to the semifinals. And of course, next Saturday, from the Londonderry Bowling Center here at 12 noon, it'll be Dan Murphy against Chris Bovair in the men's state all events semifinals. Nine for Janet. Now a chance for Lennis Mangano to take the lead in this match. Working on a spare and dropping seven to take the lead by three. And she's got a chance for another uh, little split here off the wood. Let's see if she can get it over on the seven pin. No, the mm -hmm. ball did fly that time. A little too high in the wood. But she can gain another one in count if she knocks the seven pin down. She does. Similar shot here, off the wood for the seven. Hopefully the wood would take the three and the 10. And again, that ball is gonna fly on her. Oh, oh yes, got it. boy, terrific shots. That's four marks in a row in this game on lane 29 for Glennis Mangano. She's been perfect over there this game. Janet on the head pin, straight through. Leaves us up two, four, three, six. No wood. Ooh. Eight. One oh five through nine. Janet would love to put a mark up here in the 10th. Just to give Glennis a little something to think about. Big first ball, leaves the 6-10. With uh, what appears to be very favorable wood. And getting better all the time. Mm -hmm. Take my chances with a few of those. Yep, spare in the 10th. 115 plus the bonus ball coming. So she'll probably be over that 120 mark again. Have a pretty decent two game total. Just off the head pin, but worked out all right for her. A fill of eight and a 123 for Janet Pock. Two game total, 252. So Glennis uh, does not have to mark here in order to maintain her lead into game three. She's working on a spare right now. She's riding the head pin again. Six, seven, eight. Eight and a half. Both are <laughs> rocking, but it'll be eight. Well, she tried to sweep this wood just on the right of that three pin and sweep it to the left. She's got a chance, not quite. A little too much of the wood. But she can gain another two and count. She's offset an eight box, and then she has to contend with a spare eight in the final frame. And that'll be a nine. Nine box for Glennis. Ball clipping the wood in the channel. So lead is 14. But as I said, spare eight for Janet. It's already posted. Oh, big first ball. Carries out the 10 pin. And a spare lead for Glennis on the 5-8. No, she's going to go by the five. So Janet will gain some of those pins back, and it's going to be in the single numbers. The lead, that is, for Glennis. It'll be a 10, and Glennis has back-to-back -back 129s for a two-game total of 258. Great match going here to decide the Women's all Event State Championship. Six pins is the lead for Glennis Mangano with one game to go, and we will be back with it after this break.
once again, here's how they got here. The top five in the all events advanced to this uh, stepladder format, if you will, the playoff format. Carol Downey defeated Debbie Regan, the number five seed. Glennis Mangano knocked off Lois Queen, the number four seed. Those were five game matches, as you see the scores indicated there. And then last week, of course, here on the wins, Glennis Mangano with the 320 to 307 victory over Carol Downey to move her into today's championship match against Janet Pock. And Glennis is all set now to start game three. She has a six game lead, looking for a six pin lead, rather, looking for her first New Hampshire state championship. Janet Pock looking for her fourth state title in New Hampshire. Oh, had a break when the 10 pin went down, five and eight. And she's got room to get by that front piece of wood. For the spare? No. I heard someone say in the crowd that Wood's not even there, just go right by it. That's probably the last thing she wanted to hear before she <laughs> approached that pin. <laughs> As a reminder that it was there. And it's a nine box. Oh, great pocket hit that time for Glennis, and she has the 6'10". A little heavy in the pocket, but a great mix through the center of the rack, kicking out the four pin. For the spare. That is her 10th mark of the match. Nine spares and one strike for Glennis. And she has just uh, owned lane 29 in this match. Janet off target to the right, but leaves herself just the one, two, and four. Boy, Janet throws that explosive ball, doesn't she? Yeah, she throws as uh, hard as most men do. For the spare. Pretty accurate, too. You see the one, two, and four cleared out of there for her spear. Chance to take the lead. Not what she wanted on the fill, just four. That was Janet's ninth mark, by the way. Seven spares and two strikes. Good. Little light on the head pin. And the nine for Janet. One pin advantage for Glennis plus this bonus ball. And see Janet's last spare attempt. Just touching the head pin. Goes right to the sidewall. No chance for the four seven. Glennis on a spare, getting a nice fill of nine. Leaving the six pin. Adding to her lead, it's now 11. And the single pin for the spare. It's been her nemesis the last few weeks, but certainly was right on that four pin, a uh, six pin, I should say, for two in a row, and trying to build that lead. She pulls first. Janet will have the last say, the last two boxes. Oh, big break off the head pin. Well, I'll tell you what, Dan. Glennis has eight of her 11 marks over here on lane 29. Eight of the 11 times she's been over here, she's marked. Making another one. And she's got nine out of 12 now. Nine out of 12 marks on lane 29 for Glennis Mangano, and that's three spares in a row. Janet Park with a strike. Right back. Janet just gets up there and says, so what? <laughs> just throw a strike here. <laughs> oh, look out. Oh, a little nice. full that time try to get the four pin out of there. It's going to be the three, six, and four. Uh, Wood is pretty deep to help her. She's going to have to do this on her own, either inside and off the wall, or try to split the three and the six. No, she went by. Oh, she didn't. No. She just caught enough of it. I thought she went by the three pin. And it'll go as a nine. We will break six boxes to go to decide the state championship. Glennis Mangano in the lead at the moment will return.
All right, here we go. After all of this bowling, the state championship comes down to six boxes now. Glennis back on the head pin again, seven pin drop. This time the triangle three, five, and six, trying to go four marks in a row. That increased her lead to 16 with the fill. No, not this time. That's the one she wanted, but she does get the 10. 71 at the halfway point. Pretty good pocket hit there. Another triangle. Boy, she's had a lot of practice on the triangle. Yeah, last time it was 3-5-6. This time the 2-4-5. For the spare? Oh, yes. A good one. And again on lane 29. <laughs> that's 10 marks on lane 29. Oh, got a good break there with the four pin going down and leaves herself the three, six, ten, and a piece of wood in front. And the spare. Mark number 11 for Janet Puck. Janet not happy with that first ball. No, she held up two fingers. She thought she was going to have the spread eagle on the right hand side, but was able to manage four anyways. Four horsemen plus the 6'10. Well, much as she did last week, Dan, Glennis Mangano will have the lead coming down to the final four boxes. A nine for Janet Pock. So the lead is 13 plus this fill ball. Very important ball right here for Glennis Mangano. Right in the pocket. Buried it. Look out. It's a nine drop. Let's see where this wood settles down. Oh, it's... Not good. <laughs> it's not good. Crowd groaning. But it could come off the right side, a left side wall, though. You never know. She's going to try to cap it. Good effort there. Oh, and there it was so on the second close. chance. Yep. Well, she's moving over to her lane 29. So. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, she's back in the pocket. This time, let's see, the two and the eight. But she's got some more. These are the two pins you knock out for the half worcester. You see this all the time. But to have them by themselves and try it, it's difficult. But she's going to get some help with the wood to the left. Oh. No, not this time. Didn't get enough help, that's for sure. So for the first time this game, Janet will be facing two open frames. Nine box. 109 through 8. The lead is 22 for Glennis Mangano. But again, as you mentioned, Dan, Janet opposite two open boxes here. Well, she could make things a little easier for herself uh, by putting up one mark or even two. Wow. That would have been one of those bring the house down kind of shots. Absolutely. It's a difficult spare leave. Well, let's set it up the last three frames. Janice down by 22 pins. Needs, I would say, three decent marks, hoping that Glennis does not mark the last two. So she would want to put one up here in the eighth box. On the head pin again. Look out. Big strike. Well, that could change things uh, a lot going Absolutely. to the final two boxes. Absolutely. Not Big only, strike in the eighth. Not only has a strike in the eighth working, but gives Glennis something to think about. 
That Sets is, herself up for possible double strike if Glennis was to throw a mark. That is Janet's so. fourth strike of the match. Glennis Mangano now for her final two, and oh, she boy. almost answers. It's about this time last week, she had a big five pin against Carol Downey. Oh, this is just as big. Oh, oh she all over right it. On it. Pressure shot there by Glennis Mangano. Sometimes that's the easy part of it, though. That now is it's the fill. 14th mark of this match. Oh, on the head pin again, a little full that time. Now, the way the wood's situated, if she catches that three pin, she may jump it over. No, she's going down the center. And what you want to do is get as many as you can with this ball. Glenn is waiting for one of her bowling balls to return. And she takes out three. That could be a very critical ball before this is all over. 134 for Glennis Mangano. A three game total of 392. <laughs> and now she can just watch. So Janet would need 140 to tie. Oh, look out. Remember, she was rolling on a strike and Janet was trying to make the double strike happen. You know, she's disappointed there, but she's still got to work. There's, the light, there's still light at the end of the tunnel here if she was to convert this. Yeah. No. So she is going to have to have a double strike in right. the 10th. Actually, uh, well, we'll see what happens here. Nine, one, twelve. She will need... Triple strike to tie? Right. Well, no, actually a triple strike to win by one. Or by two. So she has to have the double right. and then an eight fill to tie. This has to be a strike and that's it. Boy, what a great match this was. Glennis Mangano is the New Hampshire state champion for 1995. But what a terrific match. Coming right down to the final box. Janet will put the spare up in the 10th. And now finish it out. The final margin may be in single digits, depending on this fill. A six, a 128 for Janet Pock. 380, her three game total. Terrific match by both bowlers. Again, as we mentioned, teammates earlier in the state tournament. Glennis Mangano is the state champion for 1995 and we'll be back to award the trophy and the prize money and set you up for the men's tournament, which begins next Saturday after we take this time out. Welcome back to the Londonderry Bowling Center. Doug Brown along with the president of the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association, Dan Murphy. And uh, boy, we couldn't have asked for anything better in that championship no, match. Just uh, two uh, great women bowlers that went head to head in a, in a great match. And it's, um, it's only too bad that we have to present a winning trophy to only one of them. <laughs> well, I know you're ready to present that winning trophy. But uh, before we do that, let's take care of another check that we want to present. Janet Pock, come on up. A uh, second place check this year for Janet, $250. And uh, our congratulations. Uh, I know this, this must have been tough in a way, Janet, because you know, you're bowling against someone uh, who's not only a great bowler, but also one of your teammates uh, from earlier in the event. Yeah, it makes it a little easier to bowl. You're a little <laughs> bit more comfortable. Yeah. And uh, obviously, you both bowled terrific. Uh, it came down to the last few boxes. Uh, it's kind of interesting, too, because you're both the defending Massachusetts state champions as well. So maybe you'll get another shot at it later on. Uh, hopefully, I will. <laughs> well, congratulations. Uh, three times you've won this event, once in Massachusetts. Um, you know, it, when it comes down to the finals, it's just sometimes a question of a pin or two either way and, yeah, and that's what happened today. Yeah, uh, she carried the extra pin and I didn't in the last two strings and that was the difference. She pulled great. Well, congratulations and we hope to see you again real soon. Thanks. All right, Janet Pock, a terrific champion. And now Glennis Mangano, come on up because we have a check for you and also a trophy. Step right in here in the champion's position because I'm gonna have uh, Dan, the president of the NHCBA, present you with the check and with the trophy. Well, there's one thing I like to do. This is supposed to be the cream of the crop. Now, last <laughs> week, I don't wanna bring back bad memories, but the cream seemed to be a little curdling last week. <laughs> what did you do this week? Uh, you were on top of your game. This is what we expected last week from you. I don't really know. I just, um, 
I think after last week, um, I scared myself bowling that bad, and I really, you know, just kind of concentrated a little more and slowed it down and it seemed to work a little better. Well, usually when you give great bowlers a second chance, uh, they come through, and that's what happened to you. So on behalf of the New Hampshire Candleman Bowling Association, uh, please don't drop this. Uh, we've been worried about this all day long. Uh, a great trophy in the shape of uh, this great state, the great Granite State. Um, that's a prized possession. Uh, this also, I think you put it to some good use, a check for $500 on behalf of the association. Congratulations. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, congratulations, Glennis. Uh, again, as Janet mentioned, uh, we talked about this during the course of the match, too. Uh, perhaps a little more comfortable when you're bowling someone you know so well uh, because you were teammates for part of this yeah. event. So really, in, in kind of a strange way, uh, uh, Janet does have a part of this because she was one of your teammates in the all events. She, for some reason, always brings out the best of me. I said it to her. I want her to come to all the tournaments, bowl next to me all the time. <laughs> Because when you bowl next to a great bowler, it's like, you know, you know you have to do good, so she brings out the best in you. Well, you have uh, your Massachusetts championship from two years ago, and now your first New Hampshire championship. Congratulations. Thank you. That's great. Glennis Mangano, this uh, round of applause for you. <laughs> Terrific champion, and, uh, well, both great champions, really. Uh, both have won events previously, and... Uh, now Glennis has her first New Hampshire State Championship. That's right, and she uh, she summed it all up. When you bowl against a great bowler, you seem to bring your game up one step more. All right, well, now we can look ahead to next week's match, which will begin our coverage of the Men's All Events Championship. And, uh, well, you just uh, gave me a perfect lead into this now. Uh, it's not very often that I get a chance to talk to a bowler the week before they're going to bowl, <laughs> but it's going to be your match next week in the semifinals against 18-year-old Chris Bovair, who's been somewhat of a sensation uh, during this whole tournament now the same strategy you just said about Glennis could also apply to Chris he's bowling against one of the best of all time you've got more state championships than anybody and now uh, he gets to bowl against you next week well I like to think that I have to step my game up a little bit to get to his <laughs> level uh, uh, he certainly isn't short on talent they don't know him because he hasn't has a name recognition yet but he is a certainly a great canopin bowler and he's you're gonna see him on this show a lot more than you're gonna see me <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna what take this week off uh, in preparation uh, for next next uh, Saturday's match yeah I'm gonna go out do some road work and sharpen up my game a little bit and come back and hopefully do well. All right, that'll be Dan Murphy against Chris Bovair next Saturday at noon here from the London Area Bowling Center. And of course, two weeks from today, the winner of that match will face our top seed, Gary Carrington, for the men's 1995 All Events New Hampshire Championship. We've got two more weeks ahead here in the state tournament. Don't forget, tomorrow afternoon at noon here on the wins from Park Place Lanes, it'll be our semifinal match in the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Be sure and join us for that one. Uh, Gary Carrington, speaking of Gary Carrington, had a terrific match last week beating John Plant. He will face Chris Sargent tomorrow here on the wins. So until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a great weekend, everybody.